Hi everybody. I have decided that this channel lacks a history part because there is so much that we can learn from the history of science. So today I want to tell you a story. It's the story of how Werner Heisenberg got the uncertainty principle named after him. Heisenberg was born in 1901 in the German city of Würzburg. He went on to study physics in Munich. In 1923, Heisenberg was scheduled for his final oral examination to obtain his doctorate. He passed mathematics, theoretical physics and astronomy just fine, but then he ran into trouble with experimental physics. His examination in experimental physics was by Wilhelm Wien. That's the guy who has Wien's law named after him. Wien, as an experimentalist, had required that Heisenberg did a practicum, which is a series of exercises in physics experimentation. It's lab work for beginners, basically. But the university lacked some equipment and Heisenberg was not interested enough to find out where to get it. So he just moved on to other things without looking much into the experiments that he was supposed to do. That, as it turned out, was not a good idea. When Heisenberg's day of the experimental examination came, it did not go well. In their book, The Historical Development of Quantum Theory, Mera and Rechenberg recount, Wien was annoyed when he learned in the examination that Heisenberg had done so little in the experimental exercise given to him. He then began to ask Heisenberg questions to gauge his familiarity with the experimental setup. For instance, he wanted to know what the resolving power of the fabry perot interferometer was. Wien had explained all this in one of his lectures on optics. Besides, Heisenberg was supposed to study it anyway. But he had not done so and now tried to figure it out unsuccessfully in the short time available during the examination. Wien asked about the resolving power of a microscope. Heisenberg did not know that either. Wien questioned him about the resolving power of telescopes, which Heisenberg also did not know. What happened next? Well, Wien wanted to fail Heisenberg, but the theoretical physicist Arnold Sommerfeld came to Heisenberg's help. Heisenberg had excelled in the axiom on theoretical physics, and so Sommerfeld put in a strong word in favor of giving Heisenberg his PhD. With that, Heisenberg passed the doctoral examination, though he got the lowest possible grade. But this was not the end of the story. Heisenberg was so embarrassed about his miserable performance that he sat down to learn everything about telescopes and microscopes that he could find. This was in the early days of quantum mechanics, and it led him to wonder if there is a fundamental limit to how well one can resolve structures with a microscope. He went about formulating a thought experiment, which is now known as Heisenberg's microscope. This thought experiment was about measuring a single electron, something which was actually not possible at the time. The smallest distance you can resolve with a microscope, let us call this delta x, depends on both the wavelength of the light that you use, which I will call lambda, and the opening angle of the microscope, epsilon. The smallest resolvable distance is proportional to the wavelength, so a smaller wavelength allows you to resolve smaller structures. And it is inversely proportional to the sign of the opening angle. A smaller opening angle makes the resolution worse. But, said Heisenberg, if light is made of particles, that's the photons, and I try to measure the position of an electron with light, then the photons will kick the electron but I need some opening angle for the microscope to work, which means I don't know exactly where the photon is coming from. Therefore, the act of measuring the position of the electron with a photon actually makes me less certain about where the electron is, because I didn't know where the photon came from. Heisenberg estimated that the momentum that would be transferred from the photon to the electron is proportional to the energy of the photon, which means it is inversely proportional to the wavelength, and it is proportional to the sine of the opening angle. So if we call that momentum delta p, we have delta p is proportional to sine epsilon over lambda. And the constant in front of this is Planck's constant, because that gives you the relation between the energy and the wavelength of the photon. Now you can see that if you multiply the two uncertainties, the one in position and the one in momentum of the electron, 
you find that it's just Planck's constant. This is Heisenberg's famous uncertainty principle. The more you know about the position of the particle, the less you know about the momentum and the other way around. We know today that Heisenberg's argument for microscopes is not quite correct, but remarkably enough, the conclusion is correct. Indeed, this uncertainty has nothing to do with microscopes in particular. Heisenberg's uncertainty is far more than that. It's the general property of nature. And it does not only hold for position and momenta, but for many other pairs of quantities. Many years later, Heisenberg wrote about his insight. So one might even assume that in the work on the gamma ray microscope and the uncertainty relation, I used the knowledge which I had acquired by this poor examination. I like this story because it tells us that if there is something that you don't understand, then don't be ashamed and run away from it, but dig into it. Maybe you will find that no one really understands it and you will leave your mark in science. Thanks for watching. See you next week.